Buongiorno everyone, uh, good morning. I'm Antonio Vanni, I'm the Executive Director of Florence Academy of Art. And it's a great pleasure today to open the celebration of the first 35 graduates of the Master in Studio Arts of the Florence Academy. Today, we celebrate the outstanding accomplishments of 35 educators who dedicated three years to achieve greater knowledge, improve their professional skills, and become better teachers. Educators cultivate the future. Educators care. Empowering educators, supporting them, sharing resources, knowledge, tools to inspire their students, deeply aligns and resonates with the core value of this school. We couldn't be more happy and proud of this moment. Thank you again for being part of this special cohort of first graduates. <clears throat> Today, we also acknowledge the outstanding vision of Mandy Theis, the academic director of this program, and Susan Tintori, former, former executive director of the school. Without their vision and their hard work, this program would not exist. And of course, without uh, the hard work of many people and the staff here and on the other side of the ocean, this program would never have been able to get to the point in which we are at now. And so thank you, thank you for all those that dedicated a lot of work to support all this. And now let me give the floor to Thomas Richard, Academic Director of the School and President of FAA. Firstly, congratulations to the, to the graduates. It's a, it's a real privilege, it's an honor to be part of this ceremony, representing the school alongside you, your teachers, your colleagues, your friends and your families. Um, when you work in education, so much of the excitement comes through potential. Working with students to identify it, sometimes to their surprise and everyone's joy, then protecting it, challenging it, and expanding it. It's been wonderful to have so many teachers here in our community over these last six weeks, and even more wonderful to think of the lives that you will now touch, bringing these timeless principles to a new audience. Antonio and I inherited this school, if you like, from, from Daniel Graves and Susan Tintori, Daniel was a huge backer and understood the value of this project, but the people on the ground, um, both you know, in front and behind the scenes, were Mandy, who you'll hear from shortly, and Susan Tintori. And it's appropriate that Susan, although she no longer has a full-time role in the school, is part of today's ceremony. So, Susan, the floor is yours. The story of our school begins in a rather romantic fashion. Florence Academy founder Daniel Graves was a young painter in the 70s looking to paint in the way of the great masters of figurative realism. Once he learned the, principle, the principles and techniques of the painters he admired, Rembrandt, Titian, Velazquez, Daniel began to teach. His small private studio in the Lemon Conservatory of the gardens of the Corsini family palace was the first home of the Florence Academy of Art in 1991. Over the years, the Academy expanded to six studios in Florence. In 2015, with the help of our trustees, we purchased and renovated this magnificent space, 35,000 square feet a 19th century customs house, 
and united all our students under one roof. For over 30 years, Daniel mindfully nurtured feedback from like-minded artists, many of whom were our graduates and faculty. And others, like Mandy Theis, shared the same unchecked passion for spreading the knowledge of those painters we so admire. Mandy is the standard bearer today for introducing skill-based instruction in the K through 12 classroom. Her mission to teach children a conservatory method to, to make art led her to found the Da Vinci Initiative in 2014, through which she traveled the US teaching skill-based methodology to US teachers. When in our 30th year, the pandemic hit, I was on the phone with Mandy. As COVID raged in the fall of 2020, we thought, why not combine Mandy's pioneering initiative with the codified standards at the basis of the Florence Academy of Arts academic programming? Why not seek accreditation to expand exponentially our capacity to reach the greatest number of students possible. As Mandy said, we can either teach one student or we can teach a teacher who will reach hundreds of students in their career. That fall, we submitted the application for accreditation of a Master's of Art in Studio Art to the National Accrediting Body, the National Association of Schools of Art and Design. Our request was, to quote the association, granted without reservation. And these are the facts. And now, how I feel. <laughs> it is difficult to describe the extent of my pride for this recognition. And to know, we have forged a path for meaningful professional development for art teachers and have taken the first step in substantially improving art education for countless children. Let us be joyful today for this achievement. Thank you. Wow, okay, well, hello and welcome all to the inaugural graduation of the MA in Studio Arts program at Florence Academy of Art. <laughs> the creation of this program has been a true labor of love and I am deeply moved to see our first graduating class before me today. Now, of course, uh, part of growing and, and starting a master's degree program is that you might be asked to give a commencement speech at said program. And like many of you, uh, going into something new that I hadn't done before was a little scary. But I thought, what would I tell my students? <laughs> and I'm like, well, go, go make a master copy. Go, go look at what's been done. Go learn from those who know more than you. And so as I was looking through commencement speeches, I'm like, aha, a quote, I need a quote. <laughs> we need a pithy quote. So I, I went, and I didn't have to look too hard because there's a quote that I've been using that's guided the creation of this program and has guided me as an educator for a long time. And I read it almost immediately that when I first discovered Atelier Training. And it's a quote by Robert Beverly Hale. Uh, and, and he's describing the qualities of light in this quote. And he says, the artist must be the creator and destroyer of light. In the direct sense, what he meant, of course, is that artists can create light in their drawings and paintings with deafness of touch, or as we probably all found out in the course of our atelier training these last few years, uh, we can also accidentally destroy our light effects with inadequate technique. <laughs> But as I was preparing this speech, his words started to take on a new meaning for me. 
Artists are the creators and destroyers of light, he says. And all of us here today, we, we are creators of light. We physically manifest the qualities of light in our drawings and paintings, as you see around me. But we also provide light of another kind in the world as educators. The skills you have all strived to learn these last three years were nearly lost to time as technical training fell out of favor over most of the last century. By the 1980s, there were very few places left in the world where these skills were being preserved and shared. And by the 1990s, the Florence Academy of Art was and continues to be one of those rare places. The light you create moving forward isn't simply in your artwork. It is in the carrying forwards of vast artistic knowledge. Knowledge gathered through the sweat and tears of all the artists that came before you that tried with earnest to capture something of the visible world on their paper and canvas. Knowledge that flirted with extinction within our very lifetimes. Knowledge that you all now have access to and can carry forwards. My hope for all of you is that when your students ask you how to make something look real, you will have an answer for them. That when your students have a vision for an artwork that they wish to create, that they will never have to compromise their ideas because they didn't have the technique to achieve it. My dream for all of you is that you have the confidence to make the artwork that is in your head and in your heart. And that you now know how to find your way through the tangles of artwork that is mid-completion and emerge to the other side victorious. With your newfound knowledge, I know that you can achieve exactly what you intend to with your artwork. The Atelier path isn't easy. <laughs> it's certainly not the one everyone else is taking. Atelier training is often a world of outsiders and outcasts. Sometimes we are told the figure is dead by people who can't even find the top and bottom of a post. It takes guts to follow your heart when a large portion of the art world doesn't value the hard work and technique that only dedicated study can yield. Atelier training is the, the countercultural movement in the art of our era, and it's gaining momentum as the population at large tires of blank canvases and pines for something to look at that is thoughtful and possibly even beautiful. And the very existence of this accredited master's degree program is proof of that. Even more so, the many art teachers before me today who will be going back to their home classrooms and sharing this knowledge with the thousands of students they teach over the course of their careers is a testament to the value of what you've learned here. This MA program is the turning point for technical ability in art. Because of the dedication of the graduates before me to pursue atelier training, your students for generations to come will reap the benefits. Your students will have the opportunity to create artwork with skill and without compromise. To all of you who have dedicated your summers to mastering your craft, I salute you and what you stand for. This is a momentous occasion in the world of art. <laughs> and you are on the ground floor of that change that is shifting the art world towards the abilities you now possess. I am deeply proud of your fortitude, and most especially your courage. Atelier training is not easy, and you did it. Now I beg all of you to pay forward this knowledge. Be the creators of light, proudly show off your skills and knowledge, and help others find the light that is now inside each of you. Thank you. We would first like to recognize our graduating students who are attending remotely. Juliet Aristides. Aaron Cordero. Nina Dorenzo.
Denise Volpone. And Margaret Walsh. Now to present our students in Florence. James Christopher Andrews. Laura Beck. Antonio Cangemi. Kelsey Fisher. <laughs> Daniel Gerardo Gonzalez. <laughs> Joan Ann Jacobus. Catherine McCorkle. <laughs> Priscilla Mingus. <laughs> Lorraine Mako. Ricky Mujica. <laughs> Cynthia Ellis Noid. Lydia M. Owens. Zoe Papas. <laughs> Paul Albert R. Chiano. <laughs> Sharon Reed. Randy L. Seeley. <laughs> Razel Musni Vibal. <laughs> Rebecca Woodward. <laughs> Alexandra Casaro Daleski. <laughs> Nancy Moreno Condi. <laughs> Martha Noriette L. Garcia. Diana Gonzalez. <laughs> Alexis Martinez. <laughs> Pat
Patricia E. Morris. Lisa M. Schwittenberg. Eric Santana Sosa. Jose H. Sosa. Hope Taylor. <laughs> Brian Tepper. <laughs> Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> We're not quite done yet. Um, there's one more very important part of the ceremony. Um, an honorary degree is often given to someone at the end of something, on retirement, at the end of a long and distinguished career. I think we all recognize hope and expect, and that's possibly the most beautiful part today, that this is only the beginning of something. And so there could be no more fitting recipient for the first honorary MA in studio art from the Florence Academy than Mandy. Congratulations. <laughs> Okay, um, that concludes the formal ceremony. Thank you very much, and once again, congratulations to, to all of you.